In this video, I'll show you how to make all objects visible in a visualization. In this program, I want to display an arrow representing the force vector acting on the mass due to the spring. I've already created the program, so let's run it. Well, as you can see, you have the wall, a spring, and a mass all appear, but the arrow representing the force acting on the mass is not there. There could be some issues with the code which would prevent an arrow from displaying, but looking at the shell window shows that there are no computational errors or syntax errors. So there must be something about the arrow's attributes, preventing it from being seen in the output. The arrow's position is okay. The color doesn't really matter. What about the axis? The axis attribute of the arrow is the calculation of the spring force, which is carried out on the previous line. So let's add a print statement to see exactly what this value is. Ah, the force is calculated to be negative 0.005 in the x direction. To proceed from here, you really need to check the force calculation to make sure all the lines of code that give you this value are correct. It's pretty common to forget to square something or leave off a multiplicative constant, which will not only affect the calculation but also the length of the arrow. So I've checked over all of these calculations and everything looks fine. To understand why the arrow doesn't show up, we need to compare the printed force value to the distance between the visible objects which we can see. So let's see what this distance is between the wall and the mass by comparing the positions of the objects that create wall and mass. The distance between the wall and mass is 2.5. So now it makes sense why a force arrow with a length of only 0.005 isn't showing up on the output. So in order to see the arrow, we should scale the axis attribute of the arrow so that the value is closer to this number. So here's how I think of doing this. What value should I multiply the axis calculation by to make it the same order of magnitude as the distance between the wall and the mass? If the distance is roughly 2 and the magnitude of the force is 0 0.005, then my guess for the scale factor would be, let's say, 500. 500 times the 0 0.005 is 2.5 which is on the same order of magnitude as the distance between the mass and the wall. I'm going to first define the scale factor in the constants section, then use it in the axis attribute for my arrow. Running the program shows that the arrow is too big for my taste. Well, that's okay. I didn't expect to determine the best scale factor on the first try. Now we can use this information to adjust the scale factor value. I think I'll use 100. So running the program, yeah, that works for me. It's important to understand that we did not change the value of the force. The force acting on the box is still negative 0 0.005 in the x direction, since I did nothing to the equations used to calculate the force. We can see that the force is the same value by looking at the print statement in the shell window. Using a scale factor only applies to creating 3D objects which represent calculations that are either too small or even too big to be visible at the same time as other 3D objects. The same procedure can be used to scale down an oversized object. If you create several objects but only see one thing, then one of the supersized object's attributes dominates the visual scene. Use a scale factor to shrink the object so that it can be seen at the same time as everything in the visual output by multiplying by a number smaller than one. So here's a tip. If you're creating several arrows which all represent the same kind of quantity, make sure you use the same scale factor. For example, if I included a gravitational force arrow as well as a spring force arrow, I should multiply the axis of both force arrows by the same scale factor, regardless if the gravitational force vector was initially visible. By using the same scale factor for all arrows of the same type, you can make visual comparisons between the arrows to make judgments about their relative magnitudes.